It turns out that counters are just a special case of finite state machine. And I can use the way we design finite state machines to design any of the counters we have encountered. For example, in here, in this diagram, I'm showing you some sort of a um, state diagram for a simple counter. It's a three bit up counter with some sort of an enable signal. And you can follow the diagram pretty simple, pretty easily. It's much, much easier than all of the sequence detector or the complex FSMs we've seen. So it tells me that you're gonna go from S0 to S1 to S2 to S3 to S4 to S5. And you only do this when the input is one and that input is actually the enable. If, you, if the input is zero, you just stick in the same place. And of course I can just add in here and I can say that this is where my reset is and I can just say reset here or something like that. Okay, so how do I code this particular um, finite state machine? Of course, I can go and write my state table, reduce it using kmaps and all that fun stuff, or I can just use uh, the way we describe finite state machine to describe this particular counter. So let's go to Vivado and see that. So in here, I went ahead and I created the, the Verilog module. I called it FSM counter, and it's like any other finite state machine, it takes a clock and a reset. And here, my external input was EN instead of an X, and my output is actually some, some sort of a number, which is a three bit number. Of course, I created the state register and the state next, and I just um, coded my S0 all the way to a seven binary, so using zero, one, two, three. So technically, it should use three flip flops, that's what I think. And of course, the state register is just the reset in the next state. And if you take a look at the next state, really all I have to do is just say, well, let's say what the current state is. If it's zero, the next state will be one. If it's one, and I did, I did make it make it within the if statement in here, so that it's only um, when it only moves when it's enable. I could have just done if enable, if enable, if enable, and all of them. But I found out that it actually also work if I had just put the if here. And if it is enabled, I'm gonna move on. If it's not enabled, I'm just gonna stay in the same register state. So zero goes to one, one goes to two, two goes to three, three goes to four, four goes to five, and so forth. And that's one way we can see these. This is one of the counters. So I ran some sort of a test bench. Let's take a look at that. So the test bench is here. It's pretty straightforward and simple. All I did is I reset, disabled it, waited a little bit, um, disabled the reset and enabled it and ran it for about 20 clock cycles or so. So you take a look at that. So here's the output we got. We got zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then goes back to zero, one, two, three. Because my code, I made sure that whenever you reach seven, I'm rotating back to zero. And that's just a simple counter. It's exactly as the counters we've seen before. The up counter was enabled. More interestingly, I can actually use this technique to design some sort of an arbitrary counter or what they appear to be random. For example, I went ahead and I just copied this and pasted it and changed it a little bit in here. For example, you'll see that I, cre I decided to create a counter that is actually just six states. And frankly speaking, this is my try to um, simulate some sort of a dice. Um, like if you actually throw a die, uh, or not dice, just a, just a single die, and you just throw it out, this basically counter can count one followed by six, followed by three, followed by five, followed by four, followed by two. So I just wrote that here. And you can go and take a look at my code and my code is in here. It's really the same as the normal counter. I even kept this local parameter, even though I'm not using the seven and I'm not using the zero. And I went ahead of here and I just changed the state. So after S1, I figured out that I need the six and after S6, I want the three and so forth. So this is what I actually did in here. Of course, you can, you can change these if it's easier for you, but I just kept them as is because I was just modifying the original one. So let's take a look at that um, test bench for this particular um, counter. And as I expected, I got one followed by six. You can see it here, followed by a three. You can see that here, followed by a five. We can see it here, followed by a four. You can see it here, followed by a two, and that's right, and then followed by a one. And I really can use this particular counter. It looks like an arbitrary counter. I created it this way, and I can use it to actually as a, to simulate a th th um, like a throw of a die, like one, six, three, five, four, three. You can just keep it running and just sample it at some sort of a random moment, and you get a die. And that's how we can actually create counters using um, FSM design methodology.